I have a soft spot for video cards with no extra power connectors. They make it easier when it comes to allowing office PCs to perform reasonably well in games. But will the old HD7715 allow an also old workstation to play some of the more recent titles? The GPU itself is a variant of the Cape Verde GPU, a GCM 1.0 based chip. All of the details are available on the screen right now in the GPU-Z window. And just like in the case of the earlier reviewed HD7770, we'll have to make do with just 1GB worth of VRAM. The card's rated TDP is only 55 watts, so pretty much anything resembling an Intel stock cooler will do just fine in terms of thermal solution. To no surprise, this is what Asus decided to use, and temperatures under load stay around 60C for a delta over ambient of 37C. The test system used for gathering the performance statistics is the Z230 workstation from HP, using a Xeon equivalent of the i7-4770 and 32GB of DDR3 RAM running at 1600MHz in dual channel. Staying above 60 FPS is a must in Rainbow Six Siege, but the card is too weak to keep its 1% loss above 60. Mid 50s is unattainable at 720 resolution and 50% render scale, at lower settings. For anything else higher than that, the game remains playable only in terms of single player gaming experience. In the case of Fallout 4, however, one could get a single player acceptable experience at 1600 by 900 lower settings. Diamond City, one of the worst case scenario, had the card averaging in the low 30s, the 1% lows reaches 29, which is fine for this type of game. Most other game scenes will run better than this though. 720 resolution increases the performance metrics to 41 and 37 FPS respectively in Diamond City. I will not call Apex Legends playable on the HD 7750. Even at 720 resolution and lower settings, the average FPS fails to reach 60, never mind the 1% slow reaching the same threshold, you'll have to settle for 41. This is fine if you only want to look around the game, but it will make your life difficult if engaging in combat. Shadow of the Tomb Raider will actually provide a good enough experience at 720 resolution and low settings. The HD 7750 averages 41 FPS in the benchmark and the 1% lows reaches 29 FPS. This is actually fine for single player titles. I'm calling CS2 borderline playable at 720 resolution and low settings. This is mostly because of the average FPS in the low 70s. The 1% lows is somewhere in between high 40s and low 50s. This is fine for casual players, but far from ideal if you happen to be more competitive. Mediocre would label the performance in Borderlands 3. At 720 resolution, the average FPS stays in the mid 30s and the 1% lows is just above cinematic. I played games with worth performance, so I could probably stomach this game and card combination. If you have access to better cards, however, do use them. The main Battle Royale game mode for Fortnite is playable on the HD7750 in performance mode only at 720 resolution, and even then somewhat marginally. The average FPS of 80 is fine, but the 1% lows did not climb above 50. I'm happy playing the game like that, but I can understand why others would not. I don't recommend higher resolutions or pixel counts, and the results on screen carry that point across. However, the reload mode runs a lot better, the 1080 resolution has less than stellar 1% loss of 12, but I suspect this is due to loading resources. Dropping the resolution to 1600 by 900 ups the 1% loss to 90 FPS, and the average to 125. 720 resolution gets these even higher to 117 FPS for the 1% loss and above 160 FPS for the average. Just like the HD7770 reviewed earlier, Terminator Resistance runs acceptable at 720 resolution. Both the average FPS of 48 and the 1% lows above 30 are perfectly acceptable for a single player game. If you see this game on sale and you happen to still run the HD7750, you can actually play this one. The stats collected for Overwatch 2 will have you believe that the game plays very well at 1600x900 resolution on the HD7750. However, the average of 78 FPS and 1% loss of 62 were collected in the training mission. An actual match will have those values at about 80% from that. This leaves the 720 resolution as the better choice when it comes to this game. Weirdly enough, Dota 2 runs a tad better on the HD 7750 than on faster Radeon cards. The small Cape Verde GPU managed an average in the low 90s and 1% loss in the low 50s, at 1080 resolution and low settings. The render scale was manually set to 100% to make sure we get a like-for-like -like comparison. Control plays a bit rougher on the 7750 than on its bigger brother, the 7770. 
In this particular case, 720 resolution and lower settings has the card averaging at 38 FPS and 1% lows in the low 20s. This is below both the 45 FPS average and 30 FPS 1% lows that I aim for in single player titles. And while you can attempt to run the game like this, you will need something better to start to enjoy it. I tested GTA 5 at 1080 resolution and low settings, and the HD 7750 was able to run the game acceptably. The card averaged 74 FPS and had the 1% lows in the low 50s. The game plays well, most likely the age of the title helps out a little Radeon. Warframe closes the set of games selected for testing this card. Like before, the test consists in playing the Mariana mission at 1080 resolution and low settings. The card averaged 83 FPS and produced a 1% lows values of 56. This is perfectly fine for a PvE title like this one, and if higher FPS is a requirement, then you can always drop the resolution. It is always the cards at the bottom of the performance ladder that are the best indicator of how games require more and more performance. And while each individual game update doesn't affect performance by too much on its own, the cumulative effect cannot be denied. A Rainbow Six Siege and Fortnite used to run just fine at higher resolution than 1280x720. As time passed by, however, the performance of the average hardware increased, allowing game developers to create content that is more and more demanding. This makes the HD 7750 an acceptable option only for 720 resolution games when it comes to more popular and older titles. But that's pretty much it. This is fine if you just happen to have one lying around. But there are better options, sometimes a lot better, if you need to buy a GPU and all you have is at most 20 USD. This is it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you for the next